Last time on Dice Funk. There is a Herongon, uh, which is a basically a, a humanoid rabbit person. Um, this is Juni, or Juniper, who is a druid. Um, a, a, a gnome in a, uh, uh, in a black mask and a black cloak comes <laughs> out of the shadows. Uh, and like, uh, uh, jumps out and like poses dramatically. Uh, this is Vimble Berry Cheek Calthinian the Fourth. You can call him Dark Justice. <laughs> um, so I like the thought of them being from the various different universities, so I'm gonna suggest that Juniper is from uh, Goodfellas University. Um, oh, sick. And for a little bit, a little bit of background, the reason Juniper's uh, being being set up on this uh, research journey up to the New World is because Juniper's a little bit ahead of uh, where she should be on on doing magic. She's very good at magic. She can she can do speak with plants already, which at level one she should not be able to do, and that that's got to be helpful up there, right? I'm Zana. I'm really hot, and I'm wearing one of those like um, form fitting yet like fluffy on my head part sexy jackets from like a James Bond movie. So she's a bard. She's a cheerleader from Silver Point University. However, she is on permanent detention. But she doesn't think it's her fault. If she was just acting out after the tragic death of her parents. Anyway, she has a bedazzled rapier on it. Uh, she doesn't really know how to use it. She just thought it was cool. And then asked um, this girl on Etsy to bedazzle it for her. Oh my god. Ben was taking a look at a... Um... A statue, um, but the statue is um, actually me. Holy shit! What a <laughs> twist! What? Um, but m- me in this case is my character, who I think in a pinch I would call this type of thing a new one. Uh, what you're looking at is just a very androgynous uh, statue. Um, kind of like the Iron Giant, like, um, they got a load of spells that they were kind of given, because they the point is they've been made. So that's why you brought up Construct, right? Mm. Like, this is a new kind of thing, um, and there's a lot of mystery about that that we will explore, is, is exactly the point. So I don't think I'll say much more. Um, so I see you were just born. First of all, I'm amazing. And you should join our group, so get in the car, Luther. Uh, the dwarf says, hey, hey, easy with that. It picks up cues and social stuff real easy. You got to be a little bit more neutral in your tone there, lady. Okay, cool. Um, at which point, Juni is going to grab this robot's hand and start leaping. And there's no way Juni's actually going to be able to pull this robot along, but indicating let's move. <laughs> Uh, but I think I think how this episode is going to end is uh, we're going to roll initiative and they're going to try to beat you. Um, if if we're going to maybe die in here, um, do you, do you have a name? Do I do I do I have a name? I don't know. Do you? Dio. All right, Dio. You're not a piece of property. You're my property. Let's go. Come on, fight your way out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw a spark. Against the dark, and we erupt, but it's a slow burn. We take our chance and start to dance. Can see enough to know to turn around. The sound of a bonfire carries over fences, titillates our senses, but we don't need the heat. Um, but we're in a new season, and what we do at the beginning of each new season is really dig down into the host to try to uh, mess up your mind so that you click on our links. We try to do some Clockwork Orange stuff to you so you you support us. So let's go around, <laughs> let's go around the room. <laughs> it's the Ludovico technique. I couldn't remember what it was called. It took me a second there. Um, everybody introduce yourselves. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura. I play Juni or Juniper on this season of Dice Funk, who's a, who's a humanoid rabbit person who's a bit of a hippie. <laughs> um, I go by Laura K. Buzz on the internet, and this is the bit where I'm going to shill stuff at you. Um, you can find me at Laura K. Buzz on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Patreon, all of the places where you find people. 
On YouTube, I mainly do videos about accessibility in the video game industry, uh, under the title Accessibility. Uh, you can find those at youtube.com slash laurakbuzz. Um, other than that, I do a bunch of podcasts. Uh, I do one with Mari called Pixel Squirt, where we talk about video game porn. We're um, very scientific about it. We're very scientific and analytical. Only the most thoughtful porn reviews out there. Uh, I'm on a video game podcast called Podquisition, where we tell you whether your favourite video games are great or perfect, and definitely never have political opinions about them. Um... I do a bunch of books. I can talk about some of those now. Uh, I got some books that are... I can't believe you've done this. I was like, oh, wow, you just finished your last book, uh, Fundraiser, so we can talk about that in the next episode. Before we even get a chance, new book. You're... <laughs> yeah. You're look, supernatural. <laughs> look, I've, 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 got a, I've got a good rhythm going. Books are recurring. So I'll, I'll, I'll start by talking... The people need to know. People gotta read. So the books that are out right now, that when you hear this, you can go and, like, go and get and physically have... There's Uncomfortable Labels, which is about living at the intersection of being trans and autistic, and how the two of those kind of overlap more commonly than you would think, and how that can that intersection can sort of be. Uh, there is Things I Learned from Mario's Butt, which is an illustrated coffee table book of video game character butt reviews with a bunch of guest contributors and full page illustrations, it's wonderful. Uh, I've got a book called Gender Euphoria, which is an anthology of non-cis people's just positive, gender-affirming real-life stories. It's just a bunch of trans and non-binary people going, hey, this happened and made me feel good about my gender, and it was lovely and heartwarming, so that's some good positives. And then there's the two books I've got coming out. There's Who Hunts the Whale, uh, which is a satirical novel I'm writing with my wife, um about the evils of capitalism, but also the video game industry. Uh, and I've just announced, like, the day that we're recording this, um, I've been working on a children's book. Uh, it's called uh, Me and My Dysphoria Monster, and it is an illustrated children's book uh, about gender dysphoria, explaining it in sort of child-appropriate language and visuals in a way that doesn't sort of overly sort of simplify what's going on, but is a, you know put some words in a child-friendly way to explain a difficult experience to explain. Um, that is coming out on August 18th of this year, so the art's really cute. Go go look at the cover art I put, put on Twitter, it looks so cute. I'm, I love the artists, they've done such good work. So that's what I do, that's me. <laughs> you are living the dream, it's incredible. I, yeah, I, I guess I'll go next. Uh, my name's Mari. I stream on Twitch sometimes. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, Stacy's sick right now, so maybe not so much of that right now. But uh, you know, you can look at my backlog of video game theories. This feels so small. Yeah. Uh, my name's I'm Mari. I'm sorry, I went first. You you do cool video game porn. <laughs> oh no, oh. I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry. You review video game. Porn. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, review video yeah. game porn. Uh, <sighs> Uh, you can just find me, Geek Remix, all the things. I feel like Twitch is fun. I, you know, I'm a pretty good Let's Player. I make uh, some fun video game theories and stuff. Find it on Geek Remix channel. I think I'm funny. You um, are funny. Also, You're great. If you have any complaints, you won't be able to find a way to complain at me. <laughs> so, gotcha. Good luck catching me. <laughs> Good luck catching me, Carmen San Diego. You'll have to find me through a series of hints around the world. Uh, what's up? My name's uh, Sam. I run a YouTube channel called uh, We Are in Hell, where I do um, I don't know. I, I like uh, like I talk about uh, uh, dumb shit in a, a smart way. I, I talk about like sociology as it relates to. You know, Jordan Peterson's daughter who eats nothing but beef, um, the Illuminati, uh, really bad reality shows, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if you, if you want to learn about, like, uh, gentrification uh, through the worst show on Netflix, then I got you. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can you can find me on, uh, on, on uh, YouTube at We're in Hell. Find me on uh, Twitter, We're in Hell YT. And, uh... I, that's that's about it. That's all I got. 
I mean, so far, Laura is the only one who's actually said their character because you're trying to connect them in the minds of the audience, you know? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I'm playing um, um, uh, Vimble Berry Cheek Calthinian the Fourth, um, aka Dark Justice. Yeah, you're play, you're playing, you're playing no, no Batman. Yeah, yeah, yes, a, a lawful good rogue was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm Sophie, and I am on all the platforms as Sophie from Mars. Uh, my kind of main gig is that on YouTube I make video essays, but my channel's going through a little bit of a pivot to be a lot more political right now. So what you can look forward to in the coming year, maybe you're listening back to this and it's, it's already out, is I'm making a video about conspiracy on the left, doing a thing about uh, eugenics, a whole big thing. I feel like people don't entirely understand correctly what eugenics is and i want to correct that um i am releasing a series of interviews that i did with activists and organizers from around the world about what they do and how you can do it as well called organizing interviews and i also do a weekly commie round table show on twitch called red planet where we talk about the concrete steps that we can take towards a better world and i play dio who is a little who's a robot that they found in the warehouse <laughs> yeah so a lot of stuff happened last week it was the first episode but it escalated very quickly so i'll get this out of the way i'm austin yorski i'm the npcs and the narrator i'm austin yorski everywhere it's just my name twitter uh patreon patreon's the most important because uh that's my sole income so if you want the show to continue you should check that out that's kind of the deal you get a new episode every week for six years been running uh, as long as those numbers stay, you know, reasonably high. Uh, and that, so that's how that works. But otherwise, I'm here uh, to try to put obstacles in the paths of these goofs. And just there's a point in every season where the characters make a choice that changes everything. <laughs> Usually that's like halfway through, though. Last episode, you may have already gotten to that point because uh, Sophie's character Dio is introduced. You are a statue person. You said, uh, you know, your species is a new one. Yep. Uh, and instead of, you know, negotiating for your A new type release, of guy has officially dropped in the world of <laughs> Uh, instead of doing what Vimple said, which was come back under cover of night, uh, Zana, the bard, just grabbed you and started pulling you away. And I refuse to acknowledge the concept of slavery owning this creature person statue. And to come back and steal them would be recognize that slavery is indeed in place. And I refuse to acknowledge it as an institution. Well, this it's a very interesting choice. This is the kind of the joy of Dice Funk is there are no guardrails, there are no bumpers. We just do the damn thing and see what happens. So to start this episode, uh, let's roll initiative. There are four dwarves and four orcs, and you're stealing to what is to them uh, a piece of equipment. I am not stealing. Equipment. I am liberating. Sure, from your perspective, and Austin Yorski agrees with you. But I am not Austin Orski in this scene. I am four dwarves and four orcs, and they do not agree with you. So you love to role play being a slave owner. <laughs> Let's not accuse people of things on the show. I'm not accusing. I'm simply observing. Austin's role play being four orcs and four dwarves. Great. Uh, <laughs> I rolled 15 initiative. Uh-huh. It, we we have to model <laughs> behavior for the audience, and we, we all know how it feels when they accuse us of stuff that our characters do, <laughs> so let's... <laughs> yeah, that. that's not a great feeling. Okay, um, I rolled a three. All right, I rolled a 16, so let me put this icon for dwarves in here. Uh, up first is going to be Zana. So basically the situation is a couple of uh, fellows close the doors of the warehouse in front of you as you attempt to extract Dio. Uh, none of them are armed because they were working. They were just, you know, carrying he heavy boxes and lumber and stuff to try to build this little society in the new world. Uh, so they're not armed, but they, they are, you know, large and they, they see you stealing what is to them their property. What do you do? Can I disguise myself as one of them to just freak them out? <laughs> no, that's <I> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
I should say an important uh, element in case you didn't just listen to the last episode recently. Uh, Vimble did roll to go into stealth and is like currently in the shadows. Like, you know, in the Arkham games when you can just f- flip onto a gargoyle and everyone forgets you exist. Uh, you are in super stealth mode right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Or in the Batman cartoon when he just kind of flourishes his cape and everyone forgets he exists. That's more what I'm going for. Yeah. You just do a little sweep and suddenly you're invisible. Um, I use hideous laughter on one of the guys. Uh, yeah, so Tasha's hideous laughter is an AOE. So why don't you read that to the audience? A creature of your choice that that you can see within range perceives everything as hilariously funny and falls into fits of laughter if this spell affects it. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or fall prone, become incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. A creature with an intelligence score of four or less isn't affected. At the end of each turn and each time it takes damage, the target can make another wisdom saving throw. The target has advantage on the saving throw if it's triggered by damage. On success, the spell ends. So I can make them all laugh and we run away? Oh, no, sorry. I just read it. It's not an AoE. It's just 30 feet range. I thought thought it was a 30-foot sphere, but it's just one creature of your choice. Okay. Um, I'm doing that. All right. I'm going to roll wisdom. That's a botch. So one of the uh, dwarves collapses in laughter. How does this look? You just hit your gong at him? Um, also, my gong, much like Lizzo's tiny purse, is really small. It's like a tiny, tiny <laughs> pink war gong. Okay. So from everyone else's perspective, they see you take this tiny pink gong out and hit it in a guy's direction, and he just collapses onto the ground. Yeah, like he, he just... laughs so hard, he shits himself. Oh, God. Because okay. <laughs> he rolled a one, I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that is the rules it says in the rule book if, if they roll a one you can make them shit themselves <laughs> very brave move for 5th edition it's been in there since the original Gary Gygax was really into people shitting themselves in his game uh, we're gonna slander this man every episode uh, <laughs> Vimble you are in the shadows maybe on the top of a stack of crates in here what do you do uh, so I, I guess, uh, yeah, like, I mean, what, I, what I'm hoping to do is, like, uh, throw my darts, like, right at, like, their hands, and, like, like not, like, 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 not in, like, a deadly way, but, like, in a, ow, and, like, they, like, sort of, like, like, back away and sort of, like, gingerly, like, rub their, like, hands. Yeah, so basically, let's just do D&D combat, and when you drop someone to zero, I'll ask lethal or non-lethal, and then you can put the flavor on it. But, oh, okay. Yeah, so we do, we do that kind of stuff after the math, essentially. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, so, yeah, like, it, none of them are armed, though, right? Correct. Okay, okay. I don't, so I, okay, I don't have to, like, try, okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some darts at them from the shadows. They, I don't see shit. So you get advantage because you are in, in the shadows. Uh, so roll twice and take the higher on your attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that absolutely hits. Uh, so that's three piercing damage and three sneak attack damage because you're attacking with advantage. So sneak attack is an interesting uh, name for this ability in 5th edition because it doesn't always require actual sneaking. You just need to have advantage or the person needs to be engaged in hand-to-hand combat with someone else. So you don't actually have to be sneaking, although you are. Regardless, uh, you do six total damage, uh, and this is a a normal civilian, no armor, no weapons. So lethal or non-lethal? Oh, non-lethal. All right. So, do you want to do you want to execute on your idea? You just hit him in the hand so hard he just is like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but and, and like but like in a way where he's like spooked by it, you know? He's like, what 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 happened? Where's where what's going on here? You know, he's he's talking all like he's talking like a you know um a uh, uh, minion. You know, he's got that sort of, that sort of <laughs> banana. <laughs> 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 all dwarves in the dice fuck universe are like illumination minions now oh no <laughs> my favorite thing in my favorite thing in arkham games is when like one of the one of the goons in like guarding the joker's like secondary warehouse is like i'm gonna kill the batman and it's like who the fuck do you think you are man <laughs> dude you're a temp <laughs> worker what the fuck are yeah, you? <laughs> like, <laughs> how much is the joker paying you that you think you're gonna kill the batman come on <laughs> yeah you hired him through a uh, through an app yeah yeah exactly <laughs> he, hired, he hired him through like goon.io or like <laughs> i don't know if you guys have watched the harley quinn animated series on hbo but that's literally how they do it there's an app nice 
Um, all right, so now it's the minions' turn, and of course they're all talking to each other in a high, squeaky voice. Because they're, they're all minions now, um, and I'm going to attack all of you. Uh, oh Z- Zana, ten. I'm dead. Oh my god, that's not how this works. <laughs> Every every fight, every fight. It's been a year and a half. <laughs> the first number is against your armor class to see whether it hits you. Then we roll damage. <laughs> okay. I'm invincible. I'm not dead. I'm the opposite. I'm immortal. All right. So the the uh, one of the orcs sees uh, a dart come flying out of the darkness and slam into this guy's hand. Uh, he panics, turns, and just tries to knock you out with like a haymaker punch, Zana, and you just duck under it because it was clumsy and panicked. Um, one of the per- people tries to attack you, Juniper. I think you were the one who uh, was pulling on Dio. Uh, 20, that is going to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit. Are you sure you don't want to give me that 10 that you just gave Mari? No. I'm sure. That's two damage. You get gut punched by a different orc. Um, I'm a very small rabbit person. I flavor-wise just go flying a little bit. I'm not pretty steady. <laughs> I'm going to roll investigation for some of the guys hanging back to look for the source of the darts. Uh, 12. Uh, can you roll stealth for me, Vimble, to see if you can stay hidden? Hell yeah. 23. Oh! <laughs> Somehow, they get lost. <laughs> 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 One of the orcs uh, turns a corner in all these uh, you know rows of crates, and he's just never heard from again. His family starts putting up posters and like, "Have you seen our father? Please, we miss him so much." <laughs> so that's three orcs down. Uh, yeah, right. And, and like, like th- Vimble, or sorry, Dark Justice is just like, um, like, like, just like, sort of to, to like, uh, to like, uh, the other people in the party, just like, like, acting really cool, being like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sneaky." Oh my god. Uh, and Dio, <laughs> can you make a... Well, if you can test this, one of them grabs you and tries to pull you back. Do you let yourself be pulled, or do you try to wrench free? That's a strength contest if you do. Um, can you tell me more about their intention? Uh, they they just like, that's... Like, if someone took your iPod, <laughs> then you were like, that's fine, and you try to take it back. Uh, I fall over on them. <laughs> Okay. Um, what's like it's like pulling a vent it's like it's like trying to tip a vending machine is what is my that's how I imagine that. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, no no ill intent, just Like I'm used like Dio is used to being told like move this box over there, move those things over there. They they're not used to being pulled around and physically engaged, so I think they just tip they topple over immediately. Okay, it's your turn next. Can you actually roll me an attack? Uh, that's the flavor of this. Let's see if you do just fall over on them like a vending machine and end their career. Hmm. Oh, please hmm. just crush them. <laughs> I'm tempted to do no, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll on arm strike for now as my as me falling over on them. Twenty one. Yes. Bludgeoning damage four. They're done. They're absolutely <laughs> done. You fall on them and there's just a crunching noise as your statue body s- snaps yeah. their leg. As I as I hit the floor, I go justice. <laughs> So what you're right. saying is the campaign is saved <laughs> because everyone who saw what happened is dead now. Yes! Or lost in the void. <laughs> and the bus void. <laughs> There's still four more. One's laughing, oh. one got hit so hard he quit, uh, one got lost, and one is crushed. So t- sounds, like that, sounds like that one guy is a bit of a, a, a jokester. <laughs> What, the jokester from the movie The Jokester? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some major bad vibes from him. <laughs> Juniper, it's your turn. I feel like Lost Forever Never to be Seen Again is like, it, it's not, I, I feel like he's not in the void. He's just like, like he like, it's like, wait, why is there, there's a closet over here? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just lost in the maze of boxes. Like, you know, yeah. there, there's, gotta, there's gotta be the box that'll let you go home. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, okay, um, I am gonna, I'm gonna do a spell, I'm gonna cast Ice Knife. Oh my lord. Which is a spell that, um, it sounds like it should be a melee attack, but it's not, it's a, it's a ranged one. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna fire some ice in the hopes of doing enough like low level damage to be like let's get the fuck out of here. Um, go going non lethal is the hope with this. You create a shard of ice and fling it at one creature. Make a ranged spell attack. Uh, yes, I need to see what my what's my number. There it is. The target and each creature within five feet of it must succeed, succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 cold damage. Th- that's why I'm picking this one, as I'm hoping that I can incapacitate a lot of them with one attack. So 22 to hit. Oh my lord. And then dexterity save 12. What is your spell save DC? Uh, my spell save DC is 13. All right, so you take out two, one with the ice knife and one with the explosion. Can you paint me a picture of how that works? Flavor-wise, as to how this is non-lethal, um, I think that Juniper deliberately throws the uh, Shard of Ice not directly, because this is a thing that's going to explode, and instead is like, I'm going to get some height and just throw this near enough that it'll hit them without, you know, actually stabbing them directly with a big Shard of Ice. <laughs> just like, ow, I got hit with a bunch of ice. <laughs> So you've done this before, you know the explosive radius, and you try to catch them with just the edge, basically, of the AoE splash. Okay, that makes sense. So they're hit with, like, shrapnel, and it hurts, and they're like, you know, there's some bleeding, but they're not, like, riddled or, you know, mangled. This is not not big piece of ice right through the head. (laughs) This is... This is deliberately using a thing that is area of effect to, you know, just, just damage a group. At the end of the order, the mob is going to use a legendary action to attack Zana and Juniper again. Zana 10, Juniper. Ooh, that's a botch. So we Ooh, are, hooray. I already, already rolled a 10 against Zana, so I know that misses. Someone squares up with you and is just throwing. They're just absolutely doing the um, fucking... I'm too beautiful for them to try. <laughs> I was thinking they're trying to play like Mike, Mike Tyson's punch out and you're just... No, I look at them and flip my hair. Oh and they God. just piss. <laughs> okay, so it's psychological. It's not like you're actually that just that good at dodging. They're just they can't bring themselves to hit you. Well, I'm also good at dodging, but I'm just know that that not going to try because they're so mystified. For the botch, how about yeah, make another spell attack and let's see if uh, there's something there, that, like maybe a delayed explosive for like a chunk of ice. Why not? Maybe there's a there's a bit of ice that's stuck in the floor that. Like, has warmed up enough that it's going to shatter as a bit of an aftershock. Yep, these people are not wearing armor, so they all have 10 AC. Uh, So you throw the ice knife, it explodes, knocks two people down, the third guy runs at you, and then all the pieces uh, that are, like, scattered across the ground explode again and, like, catch him in the back as he runs towards you. Yeah, it it just, like, maybe maybe steps on a piece that hasn't hasn't gone yet, and it just... Little, little, little explosion. (laughs) All right, we're back to Zana. There's now only one. Uh, Juniper just took out three. That was badass. All right, can I pick non-lethal because everybody else is not killing anybody? Uh, I killed someone. Oh, yeah, but it was an accident, so, <laughs> you know. We, on Dice Funk, we do uh, Undertale rules. Combat is mandatory, but killing is not. Okay, well, I want to do Vicious Mockery to the last one. and be like... Slavery's like really weird, and it's weird that you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the most vicious of takedowns. All right, why don't you read Vicious Mockery to the audience? Uh, you unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantments at a creature you can see within range. If the target can hear you, though it need not understand you, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its turn. All right, I got to beat 13. Eight. That's a failure. Yeah, and they're so embarrassed. They start crying. Roll damage because a uh, Vicious Mockery has very low damage. There's a chance they survive this. One. Mm, yep. So you tell this the guy slavery is weird and he, he tears up a little bit but does not quit fighting. And he's the only guy left and he is determined at this point to, to hit you. Uh, but it is Vimble's turn. Vimble, you see this last uh, dwarf. Uh, let's just say this is the this is the leader who you know you came in and he were interfacing with, interfacing with him this whole time. You see, he looks like he is determined to knock Zana's block off. What do you do? 
I think I mean I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some uh throw a dart at him. That hits, and that looks like seven damage. Uh all right. Lethal or non lethal? Non lethal, but what I wanna do is like I wanna like go up to like like emerge from the darkness and try and like intimidate him and be like, There's a new sheriff in town. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> all right and, and then what so what you emerge from the shadows close to him and just what point blank him in the back of the head what, what, no like, like tell him like there or, oh, oh like so like like hit him with the uh, so i'd hit him with the dart and then like he's like going down and then like from the shadows emerges his worst nightmare dark justice this um uh you know a, a, a gnome uh cup like in a cloak with like a with like sort of like a uh, old timey like uh, mask on, like just like over his eyes, and then he just goes, uh, "Listen, I'm the law now. There's some new sheriffs in town." All right, great. We're making choices here. <laughs> the season's off to a great start. My dense uh, body killed one of them. Yes. Can I? So can I, can I try to like intimidate him? You already won the fight. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, okay. No, but I like want him to like to like spread our like you know, our like uh, word of our like uh, actions. No. No, keep our actions silent. As like, like, but no, like we're like the law now. <laughs> you just murdered a man in broad daylight. Your actions are gonna get out. Yeah, I mean, you rolled, <laughs> you rolled an eighteen, so the, everyone's intimidated. Well, I think that that was actually a natural twenty because my intimidation is negative two. <gasps> we didn't kill a man. A man died <laughs> to a workplace. Yeah, um, exactly. Mechanical yeah. And, failure. And Sam is explicitly trying to get people to tell that as us doing a murder. <laughs> No, I'm trying to say that, like, you know, like, we're like, you know, we, 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 like, uh, we're in charge of, like, if there's, like, any crime, we take care of it, you know? Well, make them, make sure they know that they were wrong and they deserve to be punished with that 18. I'm, 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 I'm just here to explore plants. It, I, it, I don't care if you think, if he, like, you know, like, we, you know, we'll get to that later, but, like, you know, what's important is that he knows, like, who's in charge now. <laughs> <laughs> Orc uh, goo oozes from underneath Dio. <laughs> it's okay, Dio. It wasn't murder. It was a workplace accident. <laughs> if they don't officiate you as a living citizen, you can't be charged for murder. Let's go. Yeah, that was an accident, but the rest of it wasn't because we're the, we're the ones who decide what happens here now. <laughs> yes, listen to him. Listen to that man. That was, I was like, damn, Mari, that's a good point. Either the, either Dio is a person or not. And Vimple's like, we definitely did a murder on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't a murder. I'm saying that wasn't a murder. The other one, like the people who we didn't murder, who we fucked up, that was all intentional, though. That, that's how we roll. The, the, that was an industrial accident. The rest were, that's very much what we do. So while all of this is going on, <laughs> Juniper has realized... Oh god, this is becoming a lot more than I just wanted to meet some new plants to talk to. Juniper has an ability called Rabbit Hop. As a bonus action, I can jump a number of feet equal to five times my proficiency bonus. I can do it up to three times in a long rest. Juniper is <laughs> doing some very big hops out the way. <laughs> Uh, Juniper is literally leaving the scene, does not want to be associated with this, is panicked already that they are going to be <laughs> implicated in being part of a vigilante squad, and that is not what Juniper is here the for. The citizens of Arabella are going to invent a jail to put you in. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 Ju Juniper is 100% on board with, hey, let's help, th help this, this uh, robot person escape, but now we're talking about... Fear us with the law, Juniper is the hell gone. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I think, a really accurate picture of what would happen if an academic traveled with like a scion of a rich family and found there were no consequences. He would just immediately be like, I'm in charge now, I can do whatever I want. You'd be like, Oh, fuck, I just want to go talk to the tulips. <laughs> yeah, 100%. One, like, this is that is in character, but Juniper. Juniper does not want these consequences. There are there are trees that don't want to talk to her, and she's 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 gonna go work out what, what's up with the trees. She's gonna go see outside of the trees. Vimbo is like like oh yeah like I like I know about like the whole like trees thing, but like I thought that that was like kind of like like a side thing to the whole like main th main issue of is is that we're we're the law. 
Like no, <laughs> no, the, that, that's the, the main, main thing point. Is, we're academics here to learn. We're all here to learn. We came from universities. We're here. We're here to learn, aren't we? Is that not no? Uh, are you following her out of the warehouse? Because um, uh, I'm still going to be lying down, face down on yeah. this crushed orc. <laughs> There's orc juice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Bimble's following her out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Zana goes up to Dia and's like, come on. You got to get up now. <laughs> you have to follow me now. You follow me wherever I go. That's That's what we're doing. Come on. I follow you wherever you go. Yeah, so, and then we also have to get the orc juice off of you, unless you want to have it, because you're your own person now, who has Whoa. to do what I say. Let's go! Do I want orc juice on me? I don't know, you have to figure it out. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, Sophie committed to a character who takes on the traits of whoever is talking to them. Please, someone f- contest Mari. <laughs> Don't don't let Zana have Dio to herself. Look, one hundred percent, I agree with that. But I already committed to not wanting to be around the vigilante speech. I have made my choices. All right, so we have kind of a mini party split here. Uh, Juniper, you just kind of walk out of the, or you run, you like jump out from the warehouse into the daylight. It's like disorienting. We have the the fr- fate, the front mounted camera pointed back at your face, uh, and just as you like run through the town, um, <laughs> and, and it's just like you're freaking out. Your your eyes are bugging, and you're just running junie we need your moral compass come back like not 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 running far enough that it's you know that the, the you know the party's going to be split for long but enough to just be like no nope, no nope, i need to not be in this this is not what i thought this was going to be i knew everyone else was a little eccentric but i didn't there's a difference between eccentric and i've signed up to be a vigilante oh no <laughs> So if Juniper, you said, doesn't go far enough to cause a real party split, I was going to say, do you want to roll something here, or do you just want to have it flavorful, you stop a couple of blocks over and they catch up? I mean, maybe. Do you, do you have any thoughts what might be an interesting role to put in there? I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things that come to mind, like rolling a constitution, not to throw up from seeing mm. a man crushed, uh, maybe survival to try to, as a, like a prey instinct to hide. Um, something like that. Oh, I like, I like, I like survival. I think survival works. Uh. Um, seventeen on survival. Oh yes, perfect. Uh, this is uh, you find like a big rock uh that it blocks a view from like the main thoroughfare, and you can hide like behind it. So, f- so if the party catches up to you and you decide you want to like hide or run. Like, this is a great spot. So you're not standing out in the town square where everyone can see you, like, sweating and freaking out. Basically, the way this could have gone, if you, like, botched, I would have been like, you just run into the middle of the square, everyone sees you, like, everyone immediately yeah. knows something's wrong, and, like, you are just busted. But 17 is very yeah. good. I, yeah, I think the Juniper is, at, at the very least, able to freak out somewhere that... They can wait and she can wait and see what everyone else is doing and like, are you being are you being chased by an angry mob or are you calmly walking away? Is everything fine? I need to assess the prey versus predator situation here. Yeah. So th- you left live witnesses. So this is going to come back on you eventually. But for now, there's no immediate pressure because of this role. So everyone catches up eventually. Uh, and um, how does this look? Sorry. Before we do, can I can I like get all my darts back? Yeah, sure. We we yeah. For for the record, I'm not going to be meticulously tracking like your ammo or anything. If there is a like a story beat, let's say like you get disarmed for some reason, uh, then you'll just like we'll we'll count for that. But normally, I'm not going to be like, how many do you have? Yeah. Just J- dice funk is a show that in general doesn't worry about ammo count. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Unless there is a specific reason to. Yeah, there there could be a story beat where you're like, what if I trade all my ammo for a magic? rod or something and then yeah that's the thing but normally you're fine wait is there anywhere in town i can do that (laughs) (laughs) here's the thing i thought maybe that you know the party would gather some info try to negotiate something but like you just went right in (laughs) and just start crushing people so austin austin i will i will quibble that use of the party (laughs) 
fair. Some some of the party more than others. <laughs> okay, well, to negotiate is to validate the concept of it, and I refuse. Fair enough. Uh, so what's this? What's this look like? Everyone gathers together with Juniper. You are hidden behind a big rock on the edge of uh, the the settlement. Uh, so you're not in any immediate pressure. What do you all talk about? What's this? What's this conversation? This is like going to decide quite a bit here. <laughs> I'm covered in goo. Okay, that's intestines. I've decided I like it. Okay, that's, great. That's that's cool. Um, I like your style. That is that is good. I'm glad that you like it. I will note that it might concern and upset other people. They might see it and go, "Where did the goof come from? That looks like like a person was crushed, and that might be bad." And then they'll know we're the law. I mean, they they might they might they might get angry and upset if. They see you covered in the goo. It's probably not good, good of an idea. <laughs> uh, do do you you think it's a? Do you not like the goo? Um, I think that the goo will suggest you are dangerous to people, which I don't think is. Beneficial. I have decided I don't like the goo. You see, Ginny, if it wasn't for you, we would have just let Dio walk around with intestines all over them. Uh, 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 that's that's cool. Um, I'm glad I could help. Um, I need to. I I need to just ask this really directly. Um, are any of you here to do the? research that you ostensibly are here to do yes technically absolutely not i'm dio you you are dio um <laughs> okay, okay um because because here's the thing i'm like really bad at making maps too like that like i'm not I'm not good at cartography. I want that. Oh, to be... good. That's that's a that's a skill we can cross off the the list. Um, yeah, like really bad, like actively a liability. <laughs> Have you stopped to look around for like two seconds at where we are? This place is like it's completely untouched. Dio looks around at everything. It's the first time they've seen outside the warehouse in their memory. <laughs> We've. We've stepped into a completely pristine world. There's so much we could be learning, and I really hope that not 100% of what we're doing is doing vigilante murders as the very first thing we do stepping into this world. I mean, we can also solve mysteries or, like, you know... I mean, solving mysteries that I could get behind that... That's, Crime mysteries. That's still theoretically fine. Okay, to be fair, I wasn't trying to be a vigilante. I just wanted the statue. No, I I get that. I feel like we maybe could have stopped and talked about it for literally a few seconds and worked out, like, you know, a stealth plan that didn't have us. Okay, so maybe I have poor impulse control. Maybe... I don't ever want to be told no. But sometimes you need to be a friend, Junie, and tell me that. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so it's my fault for not <clears throat> telling you not to do a bold-faced robbery in broad daylight. Okay, okay, cool. That's how this is. Okay. Maybe we should, uh, we should, uh, research by... Uh, solving mysteries. So we can do uh, whatever we want and just go anywhere. Yeah. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me, let me just breathe for a second and calm down. I'm sorry, everyone. After, after those villainous thugs robbed my, mugged my parents once, um, they're fine now, and they're doing great. But um, after that happened, I just, I just hate crime so much. And I, 
I don't want to hurt anyone. I just, I just want to bring justice and end crime here. I get that. I get that crime is. I get that crime is is bad, and the bad people are bad. Good. But like, you are very good at stealth and secrecy. You're good at that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm right. Really good at that. So, like, what's what's more stealth and secrecy and working from the shadows than not screaming, we are the justice, we are the law, at people. So, last episode, we invented the Sword Black, <laughs> which was a, <laughs> a creature that filled the ecological niche of the horse. What is the equivalent of a vulture in this world? Let's build this together, because I think one has landed near Dio and is kind of eyeing the juice, uh, the orc juice. Okay. So you know how they say that vultures' eyes are bigger than their stomachs because they eat too much. What if it was just intestines with bat wings and then out of the mouth were like razor sharp teeth like a leech? Like you ever see the mouth of a leech? So I want to flavor this a particular way. Like all of <laughs> I like I like what you're going for in that it's a big mouth and it lives mm-hmm, to eat. Mm-hmm. But I think we are we are not considering carnivorous plants enough. <gasps> here so what if it's got like bat wings but it's basically like a pitcher plant so it's got like a big like gaping mouth yes uh into just a pit of acid yes so so fly flying type victory bell and then it has the tentacles exactly that that, yes like spiky tentacles that rips the flesh off of the body and drops it into the mouth yeah that's good next 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 time Austin asks for an animal, I'm just going to jump in and be like, it's just a nice, like, platypus with wings. <laughs> yeah, platypuses are venomous. That works. It could have been a lot worse. It sounded like we were getting into lamprey territory for a moment there, and I was very upset. Uh, but th- this flying victory bell is Brian. actually... I'm sorry? Brian. Brian? <laughs> the rules so far seem to have been the first person to speak gets to decide what the features are and what the name is. So is, and this is that species, the individual name or the species This species name. is called Brian. This is a Brian. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I love it. All right. So we have the Zorplak and Brian. <laughs> also, wait, can it, can it be that it's never called a Brian? It's just Brian. Yeah. It's just Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is my life's work. <laughs> um, okay, so Brian is eyeing up Dio and your orc juice, and it's it, uh, it's looking like it might get in your uh, personal space. And, um, and Dio, Dio is observing that and can tell that that's what it's looking at and goes... Um, I, uh, I want something, um, I found a mystery for us to solve. We should research where to find, um, a way to clean off all of the orc goo. Juniper's just sat there very unconscious that, um, the stumbling pattern of speech is the first thing picked up on. It's like, oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Is that, is that, is, is that me? Oh no. Batman, Mean Girl, and Anxiety were the things that have been, <laughs> have been imprim- imprinted so far. Sophie, after last season, when you had to do multiple character voices, you could have just coasted. You didn't, you didn't need to give yourself so much work. <laughs> could I, can I use my like tinker box to like make a, make like a, a like a squee, like a gut squeegee? <laughs> so wiping me down yeah w- make a make a d20 with proficiency which i believe is two to make a little item as a gnome you can do this 29 oh no you no did. that was two no, no. d20 sorry yeah. <laughs> uh, so 13 plus two is 15 uh yeah 15 is good so you can put some stuff together just enough to squeegee the the goo off of dio do you want to is this a, a good bonding moment between the two of you yeah, 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 yeah. Just like very, like yeah, like tenderly, like there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Is this justice? <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, justice. <laughs> justice feels good. <laughs> okay, so you clean Dio off. All the goo is now on the ground, and Brian meekly walks over and starts lapping it up. To to be clear, grabbing it with its tentacles and putting the 
the awful and the <laughs> the goo just- into the pitch of flat mouth. <laughs> just a design note here. Not every animal needs tentacles. I'm just I'm just putting it out. That there. is one school of thought, Austin. Yeah, they do. <laughs> you wouldn't. You're too young to have been raised by hentai. Okay. Just yeah. No, I, no, I don't understand how you could say that it, they don't. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> so you are old enough. Yeah. 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 By the way. Would Brian be an aberration? That's a great question. So aberration is a category of creature in, in D&D 5th edition. There are a bunch of different categories. Things can be like dragon or uh, animal. I think this is animal be- just because we're, we're doing like equivalent um, ecology here. Uh, do you have something specific you want to do? Because maybe we can bend the rules a little bit. But I think Brian is an animal. Uh, Brian's not trying to do anything for me right now. I'm just curious about the uh, the implications of some abilities I have. That's all. Okay, yeah. Like, if you wanted, if like Brian was getting aggressive, I'd say like roll animal handling is so is what I'm thinking. Also, I just can't stop thinking about the Ridley Scott series Raised by Wolves and Mari's spinoff Raised by Hentai, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which that's where I'm at now. Okay, so you all spend some time behind this rock, decompressing, getting on the same page, cleaning up Dio. What do you do next? Go back to the notice board and look for other things to do that are not <laughs> stealing a robot, maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's let's see if there's any mysteries. Okay, so two things. One is we didn't specifically say this, but also I'm not trying to do a gotcha, so we let's we can work through the we can work through this together. Did you pick up the supplies that you actually did this job for, or were they forgotten in the melee? What were the supplies in terms of like how how grab on the way out the doorable are they? Uh, they were like big heavy packs, like if you were going camping in the woods or something. Because I, I have to stress, there is no like modern economy here. This is like real pioneer hours. Like you're living off the land and you came with nothing. I. I have to be honest about my character. I don't think they would have grabbed anything on the way out. Big heavy things as as a f- fleeing scared prey animal. Yeah, not not stopping to pick up camping supplies. Don't worry, Zana threw them on the back of Dio. Dio didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Cohen brothers esque uh, fleeing from the violence that you precipitated and forgetting the stuff that you came for. That's like a fun because then you have to go back to get it, and that's like a whole madcap. Uh, yeah, like scenario. I don't know. I'm saying for sure. For sure, Dio didn't at least consciously pick up the uh, items. Um, can um, Dark so- Justice absolutely didn't. Can Dark Justice and I go back and grab them on, in stealth? Yeah, Juniper just ran out. Uh, Dark Justice and Dio uh, followed after. Just didn't think of it. But Zana was like, I, yeah, I came for this stuff. This is my stuff now. The stuff I earned. <laughs> uh, so if you all want to go back to get your stuff, yes. I'm going to need stealth to get back into the warehouse. I mean, these people are not dead. Well, the one guy's dead. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Fifteen. I, uh... 17. I'm not going back to the warehouse. Uh, Juniper, Juniper gets a crit. Oh, shit. Small and bouncy. A crit, a 17 and a 15, that's unmitigated success. A crit is to Juniper, so you pay me the picture. How does this work? You, you have full authorial control. Uh, so, using the flavor of my big, my big bunny hops, um, I think Juniper jumps up onto either like a a high window on one of the walls or up onto the ceiling if there's a skylight, and attempts to create a distraction so that those who are returning can can get in, get the stuff, and get out. And I think that this takes the form of maybe uh, getting onto the top of a shelf in this warehouse and pushing a bunch of boxes over near someone. Enough that it's like, oh, is that person okay? Everyone rush over to check they're all right. Aha, no one's near the door. Are you assuming they're not all crowded around the dead body? (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is especially funny because last episode you used a spell to knock all the boxes off the shelf. So the only way I can picture this is they finally get the last box back up on the shelf and you just push it off again. Yes! (laughs) Yes! 
Okay, yeah, that's 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 what happens. All the boxes are back on the floor. Um, and I'm assuming Dark Justice is coming back, so Dark Justice could maybe take the opportunity to head in the door quickly, grab things, and get out. Yes. So Vimble grab Vimble grabs his supplies and yours, and now the the whole group is actually provisioned to survive a couple days uh, in the wilderness here. Uh, so that's good. But I, with your can cur- I just say? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say I don't come to the warehouse because I have only just found out there's a world outside the warehouse. So <laughs> Dio is just looking around. <laughs> Earlier, Juniper said, "Look around at all the stuff." And Dio has been doing that and keeps on doing that and has just been standing there while everyone else goes back to the warehouse saying quietly to themselves, huh, so that's what there is, huh? I I, okay. I I feel I feel like J- Juniper and, and Dio could could find some some common ground. <laughs> Look, there's a world, so many things. Oh, sorry. I, I was just gonna say, like, uh, like, uh, uh, this is like a moment where like Dark Justice, like now, like, like starts to feel like a lot more like respect for like Juniper and like, like sort of like pull, pulls her aside and is like, that you did, you did real good. Maybe, uh, maybe this whole s- studying. So, Reese, whatever, whatever shit. Maybe there is something to it after all. <laughs> he doesn't even understand what they're there I mean, for. I mean, I mean, look, look. All I'm saying is maybe not screaming at people in such a way it makes them want to come for revenge may be good for us sometimes. <laughs> maybe your loser shit isn't so bad. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah. Uh, but w- with that crit, I want to give you something extra than just succeeded on getting the stuff back, which is that you overhear from the people gathering around. Because, yeah, as Sophie points out, there is a crushed body in here and people are like, put a sheet over it. Like, we got to tell his family. And somebody, uh, you overhear somebody say, like, go get red. We're not letting these these bastards get out of here alive. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and another one of them's like, he just had a new kid. Um, oh my god! His first kid was only three, but and he just, oh god. And uh-huh. Linda, I mean, Linda's at home right now. She's expecting him back at six. I can't. I don't know what. How do we? How do we? I don't know. I, I don't know how I'll be able like, to face I'm, her. I mean, you're. I mean, you're closer to her than me. I think. Oh uh, god. Is anyone oh. here? Does anyone really know Linda? I don't know. Does anyone even know Linda? Sophie, I'm so glad you have DM brain. Why are you brain. doing this to yourself? <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, that, I mean, that's. I was debating how much to twist the knife, but thank you, Sophie, for doing that for me. <laughs> uh, but these guys are not taking this lying down. Well, one of them is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Dio was, but. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh. <sighs> Welcome to Dice Funk, a podcast for psychopaths. Hey, hey you're not you, you're the one who made the murder and then made the consequences. You, you that's on you. I don't feel bad at all. You never have. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you do next? Uh, this is this is good. This is a fun, inciting incident. <laughs> uh, Dio's still just looking around, going, huh. Whoa. Yeah. Can I disguise myself as the guy who died? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you you can. I don't I don't even know how to Tech, please. You're, you're a half elf. The guy was an orc. I guess. Whatever. Who cares? Yes. My career's over anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. Can I do it? Roll deception and add your proficiency for the disguise kit. Uh, I'm going to roll deception and disguise myself as this guy. Okay. <laughs> because I have disguise self. I can... 15. Uh, so 15 is good, but to con- uh, to accurately convince anyone who actually knew him, I, I needed a 20. 15 will pass, like, um, you know... F- acquaintance uh, territory but not friend ter- ter- territory what I wanted to do was to be like oh that's not me and then go over break up tell her I'm leaving you and then just disappear and then everyone <laughs> thinks I just left my family <laughs> <laughs> and it's covered 
<laughs> okay. But, uh, <laughs> Mari? Just like a, hey, I'm leaving you. I've got a crush. No, no, no. <laughs> I was nearly crushed to death. You can see a lot of me got injured, but I'm okay. But I'm reconsidering my life. <laughs> and this isn't for me. And I'm leaving. I know that you're pregnant, but I have so to go. So you're trying to claim that the body, the crushed body on the floor, <laughs> is just like some some lost, like... <laughs> Biomass? Like, he just like. No, I threw up! I threw he up! I threw up! <laughs> threw up! Like, it squished I got scared and threw up. Me. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe this. Okay, so how, how do you disguise yourself as an orc? Describe to me how this looks. Because you, you, Zana, don't know that you rolled a 15. Mari knows, but Zana doesn't. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so I have a few things in my um, disguise kit, and I have makeup, so I put on, like, what color are orcs? Green? P- pink in our universe. They're pigs. All right, so. they're, I, all right, I make myself pink, put on, you know, some ears and, like, some prosthetic makeup, because I'm, like, really good. I'm, like, really amazing with the beauty blender, blender like, insane. Um, people are like, oh my god, like her contouring is amazing. I just contour and contour and contour <laughs> until I get the look right. Tomorrow I'm gonna get Mari's gonna send me a link of someone on TikTok painting themselves to look like a photorealistic pig and it's gonna be flawless. <laughs> Did I ever guys tell you my theory that about pigs? Oh <laughs> I, I need to hear it. <laughs> tell me your pig theory. <laughs> This is my Bible fan theory. Uh-huh. The, the Let's market, go. People are always like, the market cane is this. No. Pigs are way too genetically similar, and we can take organs from them, and they taste delicious. They're really smart, and they're a lot like us, both physiologically and mentally. What if the mark of Cain was to turn Cain into a pig, and then the Bible, like, they were cursed, so they couldn't say, like, hey, pigs are people. They're just like, don't eat hooved animals. It's weird. No one ever explains why. It's because pigs are people. I would have to look back at the list of animals from Genesis when they're created. If if pigs aren't in there, then you have a good, you have some good ground to stand on. Yeah, um, pigs are people. <laughs> you know yeah, what? I buy that. That's I just as just as plausible as the common theory at the Mark of Cain is vampirism. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So you're contouring. So I'm contouring, making myself a pig. <laughs> I forgot. It's like the mother from Wild at Heart, but instead of lipstick, it's contouring. Yes. You just contour your whole body. Okay, and then I go, hello. As you can see, I slimmed down. That's because I was crushed so hard. I threw up some of my insides. Don't be alarmed. I'm still okay. But I did have my life flash before my eyes, and I've decided I have a change of heart, and I am leaving my family. Goodbye, and I run away. Uh-huh. Like I said, <laughs> you knew... Mara, you knew you rolled a 15, Zana didn't, so you don't realize it's not working until like halfway through your lie, and then you just peace out to run back to the group. Yeah, I just run. Yeah. No, not to the group. Just, I don't want the group to get in trouble. That's actually very thoughtful. <laughs> Mari may have broken character by being thoughtful and considerate of others. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I need to apologize. <laughs> all right. So eventually, do you all regroup? Yeah. I assume they all come back to Dio because it's like, how else would yeah. Dio know where to go? Uh, so what was what was it they said to us? In the, uh, they they said in there something about Ash, Red. <laughs> Ash is the Ash is the killer from season four. Red is the killer from season nine. Oh, I thought this was like a Pokemon thing. No. <laughs> uh, right. So yeah, the the red red is being informed. Um, keep an eye out for anyone wearing all red, just in case this is by like you know Power Rangers rules. They got to color coordinate the outfits. <laughs> we'll meet blue later in the season. I was wearing all red. You you <laughs> were wearing all red. You were. Do we have the supplies? We do. What are the supplies we- for? Uh. So- we don't entirely know your needs, but we are we require shelter and survival things to be alive. Am I alive? I don't know. <laughs> are you? Am I? I think that's like up to you or something. I'm I mean you 
seem alive? I would assume you are? Defining alive as your consciousness versus your body functioning are two different things. Do you a- Are you asking if you are a person or are you asking if you are a living being? I feel like you said I was a person already. Well, that's like my opinion, but like it really comes down to you. Oh. Are you taking off the orc makeup as you say this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you're, you're all back behind the rock in the, what was his name, Bruce? Brian. Brian. Br- Brian's there, and he's just, like, v- vibing now with the group. <laughs> well, I've been super into this thing called manifestation, and it's, like, if you just, like, really believe it, it will come true. So just, like, believe you're real. I mean, there's a lot of people who wouldn't say plants are alive, but you can have conversations with the plants, and they grow, and they have a life cycle. I'd say they're alive, you know. There's a lot of ways to decide what life is. You do seem alive. Then, like, I, like, narrow my eyes and, like, sort of, like, squint at you and, like, I'm trying to, like, figure out if you're, like, fooling us. Uh, Dio makes the same face back <laughs> and, sa- <laughs> and says, You seem alive. <laughs> Vimble's like eyes grow wide and he's like actually spooked by this. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you convince this character he's a statue. <laughs> I, I think I think Juniper responds, um I mean I think that anything that can grow and change is alive. Like you know, something that can be different to what it was before by itself, it can become something new. That 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 seems alive to me, I think. The warehouse is different than was it what it was before. Yeah, but the warehouse didn't change of its own accord. Outside things changed the warehouse. But like, if you look at a plant, it can start small and become bigger, and you know, maybe grow new leaves, and it does all that, you know, without being externally made to. Do you remember when you decided you liked the orc guts all over you? And then you changed your mind that you didn't like it? Yeah, uh, you said I should decide between whether I did or I didn't, so I r- randomly picked one. And then Juniper didn't like it, so I didn't. I decided I didn't. Um, that's generally how people think. So you're doing great. How will we know if I grow leaves? Um, I mean, if you if you did grow leaves, that would maybe be a sign. But I mean, look, if nothing else, how soon will I grow leaves? Um. Juniper starts racking her brain about, do I have any spells that I can use to make this this robot person grow little leaves out of them? Because I feel like it would it would make them feel real happy. Ah, oh, what do I have? Can I can I make little leaves happen? <laughs> um, what is Druidcraft? Druidcraft, can you do that? <laughs> um, I can instantly make a flower bloom, a seed pod open, or a leaf bud bloom. Oh my lord. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where? Um Oh, okay. I'm going to make a little little I I'm going to I'm just going to throw a little seed very subtly so that a little leaf starts just growing out the top of uh, Dio's head. Uh and they they feel they feel the leaf very carefully and then they go, "Whoa. <laughs> I'm alive." I think so. I think you're alive. We should kill anybody who tries to tell you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe we don't. Oh, that was a nice we, wholesome moment. Maybe we don't need to jump to murder. <laughs> I'm the vigilante. <laughs> Dio needs to know how to defend themselves. Okay, like if we don't, they're not going to do it themselves. Like, oh. <laughs> okay. Well, now I know I'm alive, but like, what's the thing we're doing? Researching. Okay, okay, we did decide we're researching. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got back to that. 
That is a good plan. I approve. And the plans are definitely not going to change back to Vigilante Murder Squad, right? No. no. Well, well, we have to deal with this red character. Um, or we can just, like, leave. Because we have stuff. And then we can just go to, like, the next town. And they won't even know. How far is the next town? I have no idea. Probably we need camping supplies, and thankfully we have them distance away. Do any of us have a map? Oh no, the person <laughs> in the group who would be the map person for that. Oh no. <laughs> um, wait, I think I do have cartographer's tools. I don't know what that quite does. Dark, dark justice. Off the top of your head, gut instinct, how far away is the next town? First thing that comes to your head. Oh... Um, uh, uh, 200 leagues. Okay, so this is a main mechanic of this season, is that (laughs) you are supposed to be doing this. You can roll uh, with proficiency, because you are proficient with cartographer's tools. You, like, you would need to find high ground, and then, like, look around and figure out, like, the topography, and so forth. Why don't you roll that, and let's see what happens. Can I throw him up in the air? It's a cheerleading move. (laughs) That can definitely be... That could be the flavor of it. Yes! Uh, five. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Vimble, (laughs) you get thrown into the air by Zana. You do, like, a fucking 720. You Tony Hawk (laughs) through the air. Come back down, pull out a piece of paper, and fucking draw some squiggles on it, and you're like, yeah, I don't fucking know. I have no idea. I don't know. Oh. I'm much more into I'm much more into justice than that. I want to be real clear about why <laughs> Juniper was asking this because Dark Justice has been very clear. Zero map doing ability. Um, whatever Dark Justice said, the answer was Juniper was going to assume the opposite. So, oh, you said it's very <laughs> far away. It's actually pr- it's probably quite close. Like Ju- Juniper is going to assume that the exact opposite is correct. <laughs> So you have the you actually do have the proficiency, so you somewhere do have the skills to do this. You're just not applying yourself, which is totally yeah, yeah. fair. Wow. I mean that I, I'm pretty sure that was just a like that was mostly a very unlucky roll, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. But no, there 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 this is important for the season. This is like the whole premise of it. But right now Vimble is letting you down. Maybe he has some character development in his future, but right now useless absolutely <laughs> useless um and you are you're all in some pretty big trouble here not only is someone named red coming for you you don't know what direction to go in you don't know where is safe uh you're this is uh we've now entered the survival crafting rpg part of the season i didn't know we were gonna get here so fast but na- we are now playing uh, don't starve uh, juniper looks at the map and the first response is I I know you said you were bad at maps. Have you ever even seen one before? <laughs> and he just sort of like Dark Justice just or like Vimble just sort of like just like stutters and, and then just like sort of like like just starts muttering to himself and sort of like like skulks away. <laughs> oh no. Spoiler if we're playing Don't Starve, Dio is gonna win very easily. Okay. Um <laughs> considering the bad state of the map, I think Juniper's suggestion is gonna be that we very carefully head back into town and try and find, at the very least, a map or a sense of where else we could head. Some kind of objective, because right now, this is a big, scary open world where someone wants harm done to us and there is literally nothing else that Juniper knows. So just, town, there was a message board, maybe there's visitor maps, maybe there's something. All right. So, what do you want to roll to that? We've just done a stealth roll, and I don't know that you're going to be able to stealth through the main thoroughfare. Uh, is there another skill you would like to employ here to, to? I I was I was gonna suggest I've already done survival today, so I was gonna suggest maybe acrobatics for Juniper to attempt to just get in, get some stuff, and get away. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, Juniper, you can roll that to go on ahead and do some uh some roof to roof scouting. Yeah. That's fun. At, at the very least be giving some like hand signals from up on the roofs maybe to be like, "Oh, just turn turn that way and then round there. We're all good." 
Nice. At 12? Yeah, so slightly above average. Yeah, I, th I think you jump onto a roof and you're trying to, you know, give some signals. And it, it, with a, only a 12, you can't uh, establish the kind of uh, military discipline required to get everyone across town. Like there's a version of this where you're like, you know, giving people the go and stop sign as uh, to do a, like a s escort mission across town. That's not going to work. They don't know what they should be doing <laughs> you're, you're not you know clear enough so eventually you decide with a 12 to just jump on ahead and and see if you can sneak a peek um up at the the main building where the job board was um i've actually been doing a lot of research about maps and pre preparation for this uh and also other things but um i was it was an interesting nerd <laughs> an interesting thing <laughs> i was uh doing also i was reading about uh the wars of the coalition after the french revolution and one of the things that helped napoleon rise to power was he worked in this office basically in charge of maps uh and even even that late in history having a good reliable map was rare and valuable you you think of maps as like something humans invented very early and like perfected, uh, I guess quickly is just not true. Like good reliable maps are actually relatively recent is I guess the thesis statement I was going for there. With a twelve, you can like jump onto the roof of of a a building across the street and like look through the window and like maybe spy something. Uh, but unless you take a bigger risk, uh, you're not going to get a great look at the map. I guess is my my thought here do you want to push your luck uh uh i'm up for pushing my luck do you want me to do a roll to push my luck uh yes i do yeah what do you want me to roll um let me double check here like athletics maybe yeah or, um, i think this is athletics yeah. to do like a, a, a some kind of hanging like a pull-up bar maneuver to like hang off the roof to look through the window to, to not accidentally, like, let go and just, like, oops, I fell onto a table and sent the paperwork scattering and everyone's looking now. Exactly. You're basically, like, yeah. Spider-Manning down to try to get a look at a map that someone has pinned to the wall. Uh, 15. There you go. Incredible. So, Juniper, at great personal risk, goes on ahead, go jumps from roof to roof, climbs uh, down from uh, a high place and, like, spies through a window a rough map someone did of just the surrounding area. Uh, there just isn't that much information because your group is here to find that information. <laughs> you are the people who are supposed to be uh, mapping this stuff out. But someone uh, just did a very rough survey of the surrounding area. Here's the main settlement. Here is a farm where we take, you know, f food back and forth and stuff. Here's a river nearby. And then you see uh, in each cardinal direction there are other settlements, but that's as far as it goes. If there are people beyond that, the map maker is not aware of it. So as far as you know, this is like the main settlement where people come when they come to Arabella where they, where they try to make a life and a couple people have moved on further in each direction, but that's like it. I'm assuming none of them are, like, color-coded and one of them is red. Like, that's not a thing. <laughs> like, they're level-gated. Like, here's the legendary enemies. This is where the death claws are. Don't go that way. Oh, yeah, red. We, we, we colored this one in red because red's in charge of this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be because Juniper's the one who did this, if anything, I would say, like, uh, so maybe they did, like, a uh, some really rudimentary, like, here's a blue squiggle that you're like, oh, here's some water. I didn't check off where it goes. Here's a green squiggle. That's a forest. And I think maybe because you're here to... To look at plants maybe that's like the deciding factor for you is you're like i i want to go west because there's a cool forest here you, you know what i i think that's that's very valid i i think that juniper is going to suggest whatever direction there is greenery and a town yeah and juniper will represent it as there is a town in that direction all right so you you had a couple of high stakes roles there uh, and you understand that if you go west, you will find a cool forest, and there should be at least some people. But after that, th you know, here there be dragons, as far as anyone knows. Um, Juniper is going to attempt to, with no artistic ability, redraw that map from memory as best possible. <laughs> yeah, one, just give me a raw d20, you don't have proficiency, so... Okay, okay, how, come on, come on, we got this. 
Oh, you Oh my you god. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Gina for getting out that, that nervous competency. <laughs> it would be very funny if Vimble fails all of his cartography roles yeah. and you smash them all and so you just do his entire job. What I want to see is every other character manages to draw maps better than Vimble throughout this season. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, with, with, with a roll as high as 19, I will say specifically that uh, there's probably something that this, this helps with. Like there's a... Uh, a, th- a feature that has been dr- written on the the map that you're like, oh, that is a change in elevation that is impassable. Like we would waste like a day climbing that, so we'll go around it, and that's that's helpful. So you, this is something. Yeah, or maybe maybe part of the way to flavor it is um, having had a good look at that map and then looking back at uh, at, at Vimbles being like, oh, okay, I do get what you were trying to do with that squiggle. <laughs> That squiggle was something. Aha! Uh-huh, I see. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, let's go to the, let's go to your, uh, your 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 town or whatever. Um, I don't suppose any of you have any great wonderful skill in talking people into changing their opinions and perspectives, because I feel like literally the doorway to a pristine wonderland is a bad place to have a bad reputation i i have skills probably and i we can find out i could give it a go i think i might be better at this on this particular you you probably have so many gifts dio but i know i am good at this maybe no, but like, yeah. Just so you guys know, like, I'm like really charming, and then this is me trying to like convince you all I'm really charming with my uh, persuasion roll of two. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe not me, and maybe not you. <laughs> I'm a people person. <laughs> I'm people. Um... <laughs> I am the law. I'm sorry. I'm I'm going to work on that. I'm a person, people. <laughs> the second the second that Dark Justice it, it, it screamed I'm a people person, Juniper was like behind a rock already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, just it's a quirk of mine now, just like whenever I'm like upset or like stressed out, I just scream I am the law. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Here's the thing. I'm conventionally attractive. Let me do the talking. Okay? Um, am I conventionally attractive? Well, you are a giant statue. So I think you are by the standards of giant statues, yes. Is it is that good? Um, you are a very fuckable giant statue. <laughs> <laughs> um, who does love to hear that, a, that is that a skill of mine yes well wow. no it is um a characteristic i'm learning so much today yes but remember everything i say is the most important okay everything you say is the most important I feel like we're just watching abuse right now. <laughs> yeah, what what I think I think you making your own decisions is the most important thing a living creature can do. Oh. Dio looks reflective. While you're reflecting, it's time to introduce a mechanic that's going to be very helpful for keeping your characters alive. It's called a hit dice. Uh, you get a certain amount of them depending on your class and level. Right now, you're at level one, so you only have one, uh, and the size depends on your class. You can use these to heal uh, when nothing's going on. So now would be a great time if you have taken damage. I think Juniper, you got sucker punched. I know that. So you would you roll. I, I believe I got sucker punched for two damage. I believe. So if you would like to roll the dice, you can. This is for the audience, obviously, because I know because I already played a whole season on Dice Monk. Um, but like, do you want to unpack hit dice a bit more? Just like a bit more. 
<laughs> so it depends on your class. Like a barbarian gets a big meaty one and a wizard gets a little itty bitty one. And every time you level up, you get another one and then you can spend them. They're a resource. They're like, imagine uh, they're kind of like your medical supplies because there are healing spells, but you can make a party with no healers if you desire. And this is how you keep from dying. Mm. And then you roll them and you can add your constitution modifier to the roll. And that's how you heal. So right now, uh, if Juniper is healing, yeah. So for for example, um, druids get a D eight every level. So I'm currently level one. So once per long rest, I can roll a D eight and add that much health onto myself. Uh, as I level up, I will get an extra D eight per long rest that I can use during downtime moments. Does anyone want to roll anything about your journey? I want to say nature. I roll the seven. It's my first time seeing nature. It's very strange to me. <laughs> your contribution is like, oh, look, some nature. <laughs> uh, Twelve. I go, I go, I miss Brian. Aww. Three. Ew, what is it? <laughs> oh my god how okay the the lover of the lover of plants is the only one to recognize anything about nature yeah so the party uh fails this is uh we haven't talked about group roles yet basically half of the people need to pass for the group to pass so this is just an unmitigated failure you're walking out of town it's a dusty trail out of a kind of uh you know stereotypical western town uh, i think i said it was deadwood last week um it's just like this humble little settlement and you're walking out to the west and the sun is is large in the sky but it's getting dark in a way, it's really interesting because it's uh, this is not a, sp a sphere circling each other in space. Uh, so, like the sun, like fall goes down in a really interesting way here, where it's like it's huge and you f it feels like it's like falling on you, and then suddenly it's just gone over the horizon. It's very weird, but you all rolled really poorly, so you don't fully understand the mechanics <laughs> of the astrophysics here. Um, but I mean, I mean, Dio, it doesn't. You don't have anything to compare it no, to. No, this so it's is nothing to you. A... But everyone else, no. Uh... <laughs> D, D, as it gets starts getting dark, Dio goes, "What, what, what what's happening?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it's the sun is setting, and Dio's like, "Why? What is happening? Oh my god!" And everyone else is. <laughs> this is just hitting me. How funny this is! I just genuinely don't know why it gets dark. <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry. There's a, there's a cycle. You know how we talked about about change and things changing. It'll get dark and then it'll get light again, and it's a whole little cycle. So that is a thing to be concerned about. Another consequence, just besides the fl the flavor uh, miscommunication here, is the sun is setting, uh, and you can see in the distance kind of a very a harsh line in the ground where one biome switches to another. We discussed before how the gods created this world for people, but they weren't ecologists. They did a very... Uh, you know, unnatural, I guess is the word that comes to mind job of this where everything's very segmented. So it's like you're on the prairie section and then there's just a harsh cutoff and it's like forest in a way that maybe, especially for Juniper, you find fascinating and you're like, oh, I could write a book just about this border and become like famous in my field for it. Um, but you, but the, the failure of the role uh, means that you're focusing on that Dio, you're focusing on the sun and everyone else is like, you know, just trying to interact with this and you don't hear the sound of something approaching until it's too late to do anything about it. Austin, what's what's approaching? Uh, so you hear, I was going to say hooves, but it's not hooves. We established that Zorplax have human hands at the end of their spider legs. Um, I've just, <laughs> I actually cut out what Mari said of the, the thing and put it in the chat and was like, how are we saying this? I'm, I'm th in my mind, how I've memorized it is like, uh, uh, oh man, we lack Zorp. I wish we had more Zorp. Zorp We're Zorplax, Zorp blacking. Right. Yeah. Zorp black. Um, but there's a Zorplak coming towards you, and it has a rider. And I think earlier, I think Laura said, like, look out for anyone wearing red, which is like, yeah, you got it exactly. <laughs> Hole in one. <laughs> there's someone wearing a long red coat astride this Zorplak coming at you. And I'm going to put a picture in the roll 20. Do they surprise us? Startle us? Do, do I get advantage because I predicted they'd come wearing all red? <laughs> I would like to blast them. Don't. <laughs> anyway, I started blasting. 
Yeah, I'm suddenly startled by this thing coming at us. <laughs> Talk to them. <laughs> uh, so you, you can blast her when she gets close, but let's say like what, when you hear the Zorp Black coming, you can turn uh, and you see chasing you out of town is a, a rider on this creature. And I will describe her now. She is very large, probably eight or nine feet tall. It's hard to tell at this distance. Uh, she is a cyclops. So a kind a kind of giant with one eye. She's wearing a, a large brimmed cap, like a a cowboy hat. Let's just be let's just be honest about what it is. She's wearing like a big coat over her uh, red clothing. Uh, she has an interesting weapon. Uh, you see her, something on her fists. They look like brass knuckles. But as she gets closer, you see that uh, on top of the knuckles there is some kind of. Uh, like barrels, essentially. This is a post-apocalyptic world, so none of you know what guns are. <laughs> but like, out of character, out of character, you recognize that, like on top of her brass knuckles, she has uh, what appear to be gun barrels coming out of them. Uh, this is what's known as a, a duck foot gun, which is like um, if you just Google that, you'll see you'll see these old timey pistols which have a bunch of barrels on them, and it seems to be some kind of combination of brass knuckles and duck foot pistol on each knuckle. So when she punches you, she also fires four bullets through your body. <laughs> What the fuck? This is the coolest <laughs> weapon that has ever existed. So Dio turns, That's Dio, so Dio dope. turns around and looks at that events. rules so hard. And then Dio says to the group, uh, "There's a red colored person." I-, I was just gonna say that if nothing else happens this season, this is already the best Ice Fox season because that <laughs> weapon exists. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so uh yes the the cyclops known as red is riding towards you she has a, a cowboy hat on and these gr- br- really cool brutal weapons that to, to your eyes you don't really understand except to know that it's like a it's bad news <laughs> you're like there's some kind of magic gadget are they is this bad um yeah like try to be a person <laughs> What? Wait, <laughs> what? We have to convince um that slavery is bad. So try and like be a person, like cry or something. Uh, Dio thinks about what they've seen people do so far. Uh, don't think about that. Cry, just cry, just cry, just keep crying. Blasts them. No. <laughs> <laughs> blast them! Blast them! Oh, Fourteen. No. Oh no. Oh no! You're teaching bad <laughs> lessons to the baby. Dio thinks about what they've seen people do so far, and then reaches yeah. out their arm, and an eldritch blast emits from their hand. Yeah. What? What's the flavor? Or what's like the visual? The eldritch blast. So you said it comes out of your hand. Is it like a, just a purple streak of energy? I did say I think that there was like a the crystal was purple before, and so I think the very very same colored thing. I think the crystal in their back glows as this happens, and uh, yeah, like a. Uh, a, a, it's not just a clean streak because I think that Eldritch implies that there's a little bit more kind of like dark chaotic stuff going on so I think that it kind of spirals out in little um, kind of fractal patterns um, but not like but it is still a blast it is still a beam of energy it's just that it has this kind of like fractaling uh, crystal uh, kind of pattern and shape to it alright perfect 14 actually does hit uh, her armor doesn't seem particularly heavy. She she's like you no, know, probably wearing some kind of mesh underneath the red cloak. Um, but she stops like the Zor Black like, rears up, and uh, after a moment to to catch her breath from the impact, uh, she dismounts. She's still pretty far away, um, pretty far as strong. She she there's some distance between the groups, but uh, she gets off the Zor Black, and you see she's like a cyclops. She's like a full like she can pick you up. Of uh, you know, off the ground with one hand. Who woo? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just realized it's just Lady D. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, look, as soon as you described her as nine foot tall, I was like, are you trying to deliberately make this season's Lady D? Like that was my first. I assumed it was deliberate. She's got a big hat and she's very tall and she's a lady. Austin knows all the components. Want. It super yeah. wasn't. I just, it literally occurred to me, you can hear it on tape when I realized I made Cowboy <laughs> Lady Dimitrescu. <laughs> yeah. Look, you swapped vampire for Cyclops. With gun hands. The, 
Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Well, instead of blade hands. Yes, it's, yes. You, it's it's That's weapon how you hands, make her a, big hat. So you make her a cowboy <laughs> is you give a gun hat. Uh-huh. So she, she steps off the Zorp black and like squares up with the group at, you know what the distance is? It's like dueling distance. Like high noon. Oh. Do you draw? I mean, you shot her already, but you see she's like walking out the spurs clink with each step as she's like sizing up the group. She doesn't say anything. She's like watching to see if you try to shoot again. Um, th- th- uh, Vimble want- is like gonna try and like hide somewhere if that's possible. If there's like any like cu- like if there's like any rocks or anything that you can like hide behind or something like that. Uh, why don't you roll stealth with disadvantage because you were out in the open? But let's give you a chance. Meanwhile, Dio calls out to the person. I am a person. So six. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 hide behind a tumbleweed and it just rolls away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. So can I try and talk to big sexy lady? <laughs> <laughs> I I did not specify at any point she was sexy. I guess it's out of my hands. You now. told us she was tall and and had gun hands. You literally said that she was sexy. She's got boobs in this picture. What do you want from me? Oh my god! I sh- I should give credit. It's in the description. But if you do not know, NPCs were designed this season by Levi. Uh, the credit and link in the description to their social media. Thank you very much, Levi. You nailed it. Everyone's already goo goo for red. The Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, tall, hot lady, you're hot, I'm hot. I feel like we should talk this out. There's just been a huge misunderstanding. What say you? Uh, Red uh, regards you, Zana, and you see uh, she smiles a little bit, and you see her sharp teeth. Um, is it interesting? She has like a little bit of a, a fang thing going on here. Cyclops, Aust- famously, Austin, Aust- Austin, you you criticized us for saying she was sexy, and now you you're gonna add you're gonna add these teeth in. Oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna say, oh, she does a crooked smile like a fucking sexy pirate. Oh, okay. I'm Austin Yorsky. I didn't mean to make Lady Dimitrescu. The fangs are an accident. She's accidentally nine feet tall. But she also has I a two foot long it. tongue, but uh, that's just to be scary or something. <laughs> <laughs> her main attack is she crushes you by sitting on you with her giant ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can see something now that she's closer and like looking right at you, Zana. She appears to have some kind of um, a f- a fashion accessory on her head, which is like a, a monocular. Like imagine glasses, but for someone with one eye. But it may have some kind of magnifying power. Uh, her her eye looks like giant, even though you're at a good number of paces from her. Uh, you assume she is a crack shot with whatever kind of weapon she has on her hand. Once again, to you, maybe you think it's like, oh, those are a couple of weird wands on her glove. But it's it seems bad, um, and you say there's a misunderstanding, and she says, "All right, go ahead and explain yourself then." Okay, so this big tall thing is like a person, and they've already had two opinions already, and if they're a person, then they shouldn't be a slave. And we thought we were liberating a slave from slave owners. And I don't think we did anything wrong. In fact, we think the concept of slavery is, like, super bad. But, you know, if there's, like, some sort of cultural difference, because this is a new world, we get it. But, like, I feel like we all just came from a place where slavery was bad. And I don't think we should do it. Ain't no laws. Right. Just because there's laws doesn't mean we don't have to follow our own moral code. And if there's no laws, then we haven't done anything wrong. I mean, that is true. If there's no laws, we haven't broken any laws. Where was this cheerleader during the trials last season? Goddamn. (laughs) (laughs) Only honor, she says. And she cracks her knuckles in a way that all of the, the metal on her hand glows with some kind of eldritch power. Okay, that's super cool. But... I will say that I do not think that slavery is honorable, but I think we were honorable in trying our best not to let anyone die. The person who did that, it was an accident. All right, Zana, you've you've made your case. Roll persuasion. Oh, God. (laughs) Shit. Uh, 
No, nine. Ooh. This is supposed to be my specialty. Mm -hmm. Red, uh, maybe like spits into the dirt and says, I agree. Ain't honorable, but somebody's got to answer. Can you just say that we answer? Because we're leaving. Nah, that ain't how it be. How does it be? Home gang. I don't know what that means. I put a link to home gang in the chat. It is an ancient practice that is essentially a kind of duel. It is a legally recognized way to, dis to settle disputes. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. That's so fun. Okay, who wants to do it? Is death the end point of this? Or just, oh no, I lost the fight. Okay, you... Uh, oh no, <laughs> she's, she's gonna sit on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so dishonorable. I hope no one brings me to justice. Oh, please don't home gang me. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be so bad if someone, you know, forced me to get in line. Oh, no. <laughs> Are we playing a strip home game? <gasps> oh, my God. Okay. So, first, whoever loses first is like, oh, I am of class. And then whoever is naked first loses. Uh, you, you say about honor. If we win this challenge, does that mean... We're good to go, and this is over. Yep, that's about the size of it. Well, does that mean our names are queered in the town? Does that mean we get your honor? <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> I, I, here's a fun thing. You know the word outlaw, which is like used kind of generically as like bad guy? It literally comes from the idea of being outside the protection of the law when you break like uh, you know ancient codes of honor. So right now your outlaws the law or you know codes and honor does not protect you but if you win you restore your honor basically you could be you can be killed without repercussion at this point but if you win that's not the case oh i like this okay who who has a character even vaguely specced for combat <laughs> i do except i also only have like 4 hp i can eldritch blast till the dogs come home. Um, I feel like that lend lends me to a duel. <laughs> I gotta say. I mean, yeah. I mean, if 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 Dio wants to step forward and fight for themselves. Okay, Dio, uh, like, st uh, strides forward, imitating the walk she was doing. <gasps> so like, out turned, oh. out turned, uh, toes, in turned heels. And then, like, click, like, cracks their neck in a perfect imitation of what she was doing. <laughs> uh huh. And then goes, oh. and then goes, so then, home gang. <laughs> so is the final image of this, you fucking duel? And, like, you both, you do your Eldritch Blast and she fires her guns and, like, and then just cuts to black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. That's so good. This is sexy. <laughs> yeah, I have a note about this epi uh, uh, this episode. Too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Yorski, turn it down. <laughs> I saw a spark against the dark, and we erupt, but it's a slow burn. We take our chance and start to dance. Can see enough to know to turn around. The sound of a bonfire carries over fences, titillates our senses, but we don't need the heat. A chill wind is pushing you into me, and it's looking like we might be burning, might be burning, might be burning down. But we're a bonfire, we keep putting in, we keep putting in. Oh, we're a bonfire, I keep putting in, you keep putting in. Take your hand, but you demand a different love, a different touch. So off we go to burn below. The candle wasn't quite enough.